This is a Rubik's Cube. And this is an infinitely long line of smaller Rubik's Cubes, each with its own randomly generated scramble. Today, I'm gonna scramble this cube up and attempt to solve it. The only catch is, for every turn that I do on this cube, I have to solve one smaller cube. On average, a Rubik's Cube solves around 60 moves. Those can be single or double turns. So that gives you an idea of how many smaller cubes we might have to solve along the way. But I'm gonna go ahead and open up the cubing timer app on my phone, start and stop the timer to generate a brand new random scramble, and use that to scramble up this cube. And there we go. So I'm gonna do absolutely zero planning in advance. I'm just gonna look at the cube like I normally would and figure out what my first few turns will be. Okay, we're gonna do yellow cross just for fun. Hopefully that pays off. But before we do that first turn, we have to solve our first smaller cube. So let's do some inspection here, 15 seconds, and three, two, one, and go. And I'm gonna be timing myself just for fun. And this first cube here comes out to a time of 16.41 seconds, so not too bad. And on this cube here, I'm going to do an L prime as my first move. So now, before we do our second turn, we're gonna have to scoot over our smaller cubes and then go ahead and solve our second one. Exactly a second faster that time with a 15.41. So now we can do our second turn, which is a B prime. So I think you guys get the idea at this point. Let's go ahead and start with our third solve so we can do our third turn. Third cube complete, F. On to the next one. Fourth cube down, let's do a D prime. Cube five, L. Cube six, F. And cube seven, that was my fastest time yet with a 14.96. Let's go ahead and do a D prime to finish off that yellow cross. Cube eight, I really did not plan ahead at all. So, you know, let's do this F2L pair, U2, L prime. Ooh, PLL skip, 13.38, that's pretty good. So let's do a U prime. L2, U. Another 13, not too bad. So let's do an L prime to finish off that first F2L pair. U2. Ooh, that was a really lucky one, 12.44. Next move, let's do F. U prime. F2. L, F. And for cube 20, we are going to do an L prime to finish off our second F2L pair. B, F prime, U, F. And for cube 25, we are going to do a B prime to finish off that third F2L pair. R prime, U2, and for cube 28, let's go ahead and do an R to finish off F2L with a very easy fourth pair. B prime, R, B prime, R2, U, R, U, R prime, U prime, R. And after 39 moves, let's do a B2 to finish off that quite annoying OLL. And it looks like we have an F perm because of course we do. U prime, R prime, U prime, F prime, R, U, R prime, U prime, R prime, F, and that's cube number 50. Still feels like we're in the middle of this F perm with no end in sight. Let's do an R2. U prime. R prime. U prime. R. U. R prime. Cube 57. Let's do a U. And after solve 58 with a pretty solid time of 14.85, Let's go ahead and do an R move to finish off our big cube. So 58 moves is about what I expected, maybe a little bit shorter than usual. I think we got pretty lucky in F2L and a little bit unlucky in last layer. I'll admit it wasn't quite as tough as one turn per hour or one turn per mile, but unlike those, I found it pretty fun to go into the solve completely blind with no idea how many moves it would take. If you're wondering, my average solve time was 17.53, but in my defense, I was a little bit distracted trying to solve so many things at once. Anyway, now that we've solved cube number one here, that means we can finally go ahead and do our first real move with a U. Actually, forget it. I'll see you guys next time.